Hello, one and all, and welcome to the podcast we call The Fantastival with myself, Stephen Nussbaum. In the podcast, I invite my friends to come and talk to me all about their musical tastes, their memories, their experiences, and they get to collect their fantasy festival, which I have christened Fantastivals. We are back. This is number 171. There's been a two month absence, so all I can say is hello. And welcome back. Sorry it has been so long and I hope this episode finds everyone well. I hope everyone had a lovely summer. I hope everyone's had good times. And obviously in the time that we've been gone, uh, a certain band have come back to take everyone by storm, which is great news and more than looking forward to that. Something to look forward to next year already. First of all, massive thank you to everyone who's listened to the last episode, 170, with Vicky Hill and Sean Butler. That feels like ages ago, but it was an absolute pleasure having two of the podcast's biggest supporters on as my guest. An absolute pleasure to host them, and both of them spoke so passionately about new music and their fantasy festival lineups. It was great to have them on. So thank you to Vicky, thank you to Sean. So now it's time to introduce the guest on this, the 171st episode of the Fantastical Podcast. This week, I'm delighted to be joined by one of the biggest music fans out there, co-host of the excellent Mersey Melody Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Amy Day. Hello. Amy. All good, Amy. I'm so glad to come back with a bang. I'm so glad to have you on as my 171st guest. Welcome to the podcast. And as always, I like to check in with my guests, make sure they're doing well from a mental health perspective i think that's really important more so than ever so amy how are you i'm doing really well thank you really really well i have started not to go to two piece too early but me and my best friend have started having these massive like voice conversations on whatsapp like voice memos and i found that to be um really therapeutic over the last month so obviously i've had a few uh things going on so as my best friend with his dog and i found the whatsapp voice memo to be a uh, an absolute revelation. So if anyone's listening to this and needs to talk, don't give up on WhatsApp because WhatsApp is a an amazing piece of tech that you can go and leave like your feelings on to to communicate with. So that was a bit about mental health. I'm glad you're well, Amy. Always good to hear that. So before we crack on, I obviously know you mostly from Twitter. I know a lot about you from the fantastic podcast that you do that we're going to speak all about. But for anyone who's listening who might not know you on Twitter or might not have listened to the podcast yet, Tell us a bit about yourself. I'm Amy, by the way. Hi. <laughs> I'm 34. I'm from Liverpool and I just love music. Basically, that's it. I've loved music since since I can remember, really. Got it from my dad, who's a massive music fan. I'm trying to think. Mm-hmm. Obsessed with the Spice Girls. They were like me. <laughs> they were my number one growing up. And then it was Britney. And then it moved on to the Beatles. Very, very different. <laughs> yeah. Bit of a contrast there. Uh, and yeah, as she said, I do a podcast now. It's new uh, with my best mate called Tom, um, and it's been amazing. Really, the, the like the people people's reaction to it. It's just it's been unbelievable. Like literally, we cannot cannot believe the amount of um, you know the people the messages we've had. People have been so nice about it. The guests as well that we've had. We've had some unbelievable. Like we, yesterday, we recorded with um, Will Sargent from Echo and the Bunny Men. And that was, it was scary because, you know, he's um, he's one of my heroes, Will Sargent, but um, yeah, amazing. Amazing. It feels like you're very, um, you know, starting to get very established in the music world. Obviously a keen gig goer, right? And I know you take photos as well. Yeah, that's right. Um, not professional. I've never done it professionally yet. I, I'd like to move move on to that eventually. Uh, I've just been gifted a, a proper camera for the for the first time in since I've been doing my photography. So hopefully going forward with that you know, the, the pictures are going to be a lot better, yeah. Exciting time. So that was a bit about Amy. So you've obviously mentioned your dad and being a big music fan. So let me take you back mm-hmm. to your earliest musical memories. I'm sure there probably, or maybe there wasn't, I'm sure the Spice Girls weren't kind of the first music act to, to catch your ears, or were they? Um. Well, the Spice Girls were, I was about six, I think. Well, my dad always played, it's music around the house, isn't it? Like the, your parents played growing up. So my dad, had the, he's a massive um, Stranglers fan. So, like, as a four-year-old, I'd remember listening, you know, to Golden Brown and um, Nice and Sleazy, you know. Probably four years old, probably shouldn't have been listening to all that, but, you know. <laughs> and then, obviously, what else would my mum listening to? Michael Jackson. Eighth Song was a was a big one. I always remember that on a day, on a Sunday afternoon when she did the iron. I always remember the Eighth Song and Cynthia Reds as well, actually, thinking back. That, um, what's the one on the roller coaster? Oh, Fairground. Fairground, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always remember that one. That always um, takes me back as well. Yeah, I keep forgetting that I'm fairly old these days. So when 
you say Spice Girls, I'm like, well, when that came out, I was like, I must have been <laughs> 16 and you were saying you were six. So, yeah, obviously that would have been the first record. Who was your favourite Spice Girl, right? Because yeah. everyone had their own favourite Spice Girl. So who did you aspire to be, Amy? Oh, Baby Spice, definitely. I still love I still love Baby Spice now. I think she's amazing. I still I still actually listen to the Spice Girls. Like, and people go, well, you're not embarrassed right now. <laughs> I still love them. One thing I say about this podcast is there's no such thing as like a guilty pleasure on here. It's just yeah. pleasures, right? So whatever people like, they like. And whether they find it embarrassing or not, I feel like music is the thing that there's nothing to be embarrassed about, about mm-hmm. what you like. So great to hear you talk about the Spice Girls. I thought maybe from the Liverpool connection, Mel C might have had a, a shot. I'd say she was number four in the lineup, but me, Mel C. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, hopefully she doesn't listen to this podcast. I'm sure she doesn't. So Hope not. <laughs> in terms of your first records in Amy, was it a Spice Girls record or was there anything before or after that you bought? The first thing I bought with my own money was, um, was a Britney Spears album, actually. 1998 or 99. Well, that was, would have been, what, eight maybe? But the first CD I remember having is um, Mother Nature Calls by Cast. Stole it off my dad because he listened to a lot of what, like a lot of that music. I had a tape as well, actually, of the White Album. But again, stole it off my dad. I didn't, um, I didn't buy that myself. I, was, I, I would have only been about seven or eight at that point. So, yeah. So that's quite a mature album for like a seven or eight year old to be listening to. Obviously, you mentioned mm-hmm. kind of the pop influences, but Cast and the Beatles at that age, that's quite, that's, that's some going. That's a great kind of musical education you were having. Definitely, yeah. And it was um, like quite varied as well, actually, to be honest. The, um, like I said, my dad likes a lot of 80s music because that was played a lot. So I did, like, I liked the specials and stuff growing up. And I said my mum's into, um, like, Motown, Stevie Wonder, which I also liked as well. So what, at what age then did music become, I guess, a fascination or kind of the thing that overtook everything else? Was it an early obsession with music or was that kind of graduated to, to where you are in the current day? What age, what age did that all start off? I was about, when I got into the Beatles massively when I was about 12, I remember doing um, like a, a history project at school and we had to like, be, I can't even remember what it was about to be honest, but we had to research whatever and I, you know, was researching the Beatles and I become obsessed. Like ever since then, they've been my favourite, like ever, loved them. Do you have a favourite period of the Beatles? Because it's almost like they start off as oh. like this kind of shawaddy woody band and then by the time they finished, mm. which isn't even that kind of long after, really, I guess, in the scope of it, they're a completely different kind of beast. Do you have a favourite Beatles period or is it literally anything from them you're going to listen to? Well, like I said, the White Album was me. Probably a still my favourite Beatles album, actually, so I'd say late Beatles. But I do love A Hard Day's Night as well from 1964. So it's probably like both ends of the scale, really. I do, you know, I love it all. Yeah. Yeah, great band. So many classic albums and classic tracks. So, mm. like I said at the beginning, you started the Mersey Melody podcast. I guess what was the thinking behind that? Because it's very easy to kind of say, oh, I'm going to start a podcast. And obviously, you know how difficult it is to start a podcast. What was the motivation yeah. behind that? And how did that idea come about to you? Well, me and Tom are both massively into our music. Kind of think, you know, we want to get into the music industry. How do you, how do, you do that? How do you meet these people? How do you speak to them? We both play a little I play a bit of guitar and bass and um Tom plays a little bit of the guitar but we're not we're not professional or anything so we're thinking you know and Tom's background is um he's a journalist so he's got you know that side of it he's very professional and he you know asking these questions he's brilliant at what he does I'm more of the music side like I'm just a fan so I'm kind of learning as we go but you know I'm finding it really enjoyable it's it's been brilliant yeah so it's five episodes out right so the first one was kind of you and Tom introducing yourself yeah. which is quite difficult i think for a first podcast to, to kind of essentially talk about yourself and not have a guest on so i guess how did you find that and tell us about the further episodes because for episode two you had a pretty good guest like a, a very established yeah. guest for your second episode normally sometimes yeah. you have to build to get to where you were but by episode two you've got a guest who most podcasts would um kill for i think it's fair to say and he was he was brilliant um yeah nasha from frankie goes to hollywood uh, he just sent me a message on on uh, Twitter or X, whatever it's called these days, and he was like, you know, should we go down the pub? So he took us to his local, in, in like a back room. He was buying us Guinness, and he was just brilliant. He, he, we couldn't have asked for a better first guest, I think. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, he was brilliant. Yeah. And obviously, since then, you've had Tom from the Cairo's, who are a fantastic yeah. band. Uh, episode four was kind of an update from yourself and Tom, and episode five was with Jack from Pacific A's. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So five episodes down, 
how you said you've really enjoyed like the engagement you're getting. Have you been surprised, I guess, by the reaction that the kind of the first five episodes have had? Yeah, very, very surprised. I mean, when like, when we're recording it, it is you can tell it's like we're, we're both very passionate about music. So I think maybe that's that's what's drawing people in. If it comes across like that, I don't know because you know don't want to big myself up or anything <laughs> like that. But but um, yeah, the, the people seem to like it, so it's it's brilliant. Yeah. And obviously, you spoke about having Will Sargent, which is amazing. Any mm-hmm. other news on future guests? Anything you want to kind of hint at without giving too much away? <laughs> I, I know how difficult it is when you get someone who you want to shout from yeah. the rooftops, how difficult it is to keep a secret. But any any other hints or tips you want to doff your cap to in terms of future guests? We've got a couple of new uh, up-and-coming Liverpool musicians in the next few weeks. We've got a couple of established ones as well. Uh, we've got someone who I'm really looking forward to speaking to in, I think, November he's coming on. Obviously, there's people that, like, we've got, like, a dream list of people as well that we'd like to get on, which, you know, we've, we've got it written down, but, like, fingers crossed we'll get them on one day. So hopefully, hopefully one day we'll get them on. That was my next question, actually. Who is, again, you don't have to say if you don't want to curse it, but I guess if you could have a dream guest or dream guests in terms of if you could have certain people on the table when you're recording, who who would you love to record a podcast with? We've got two, and I think me and Tom would both say the same. Actually, Paul McCartney would be like the ultimate oh. ever, um, and also John Power as well. Obviously, both massive cast fans, and he's just well, he's my hero. Tom loves him as well, so that'd be amazing to speak to him. Yeah, fingers crossed. John Power does do mm. podcasts, as I found out. Um... Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> to my absolute surprise back uh, back earlier this year, which was amazing. I hope you managed to get at least one of your um, dream guests and you, you never know where a podcast can take you. Take it from you. Yeah. You obviously never know where it's going to go. So if anyone is listening to this podcast and hasn't heard the Mer- Mersey Melody podcast before, let's shout it out then. So Amy, where do people find the pod and what platforms can they listen? And then on your socials, where should people go to, to check out the pod? Uh, on Twitter, we are um, at Mersey Melody Pod. And then on Instagram, we're just... We're just um, Maisie Melody. So far, we're only on uh, Spotify, but we're hoping to move it to other platforms soon. Our personal socials, I'm um, at She Sunshines on everything. And Tom is uh, at Thomas RBT. Amazing. Go check out that podcast. It's wonderful. The first five episodes have been fantastic. I look forward to hearing um, the War Sergeant episode. I'm sure there's going to be many more from one of the best new podcasts out there. So since I was last doing a fantastic world. There's been loads of amazing music out. There's almost too much out to shout about. I've been listening to the new Laurie Wright album, uh, which is brilliant. And he had a shout out today from Rod Stewart, which is uh, unbelievable. So well done to Laurie. There's been amazing albums. I think the Moonlight Parade album uh, that came out about three or four weeks ago is a contender for album of the, uh, album of the year. I think that's an absolute hawking album from those guys. Apologies if I've missed anyone out. I'm sure I have. PG Charletta released an amazing single. There's been so much uh, to catch up on. But Amy... What are you currently listening to? Oh, all sorts, as always. Um, I asked, like you said before, we interviewed Tom from the Cairo, so I've been listening to their EP. Uh, I think that's brilliant. I think they're a, a brilliant young band, and uh, we saw them support cast in March or February or March, and they've got like amazing stage presence and amazing songs. I've been listening to a lot of Bob Marley as well lately, actually, and Peter Tosh and Lauren Hill as well. Yeah, that Lauren Hill very, album. Very varied. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I mean, that's a good variation of music. That Lauren Hill album is, I think, yeah. is coming up to a big anniversary of it soon. I think she's over in the UK, isn't she, fairly soon? So that'll be interesting to see kind of how those go. So, Amy, mm-hmm. this pod is about you collating your fantasy festival. Are you a big fan mm-hmm. of festivals? Have you been to many? I've never been to a festival in my life. Oh, wow. That's not the <laughs> never, answer I was never, expecting. Ever, ever. I know. I know. I need to change that, don't I? I need to get to one. How come? Is that just because of situations or something you've chosen to never go to? How how, how come you've never know, been to a, a music festival? To be honest, I don't know, because, you know, when I always like, if you watch them on the telly when they're on, I love it. So I've got no idea. Maybe next year in the summer, hopefully. Amazing. All right. OK, mm-hmm. so again, no spoilers. Obviously, I know you're a keen gig goer on the podcast. You've spoken about the gigs you've been to. Yeah. Do you have a favourite gig or do you have like some gigs that when people ask you about, you go, yeah, that was... That was a pretty special night. I saw Paul McCartney at Anfield in 2008, and I think I, that, that was the first time I'd ever seen him live. So that was a bit a bit overwhelming, actually, because he's a Beatle, and he's, like, right in front of you. And then Dave Grohl was on with him as well, actually, and I'm a massive fan of the Foo Fighters as well. 
so to see them both together it was just incredible yeah sounds amazing to and see also, paul mccartney I've and beyonce crazy. as well beyonce yeah i love beyonce yeah i was a massive fan of destiny's child growing up um and she put on an amazing show beyonce yeah Amazing. Two amazing performers. And I guess we'll find out if they're going to make your fantasy festival lineup. So for any first time listeners, the aim of the Fantastical podcast is getting our guests to collate their fantasy festival. So Amy gets to choose any five acts and one of whom must play one of their studio albums in full. And Amy also gets to pick an encore, which all five acts can perform together to end her fantasy festival, which is one song that can be by anyone at any time. So very simple, five acts take five time slots. So in the last episode of the podcast I alluded to earlier, I had Vicky and Sean on and they created their fantasy festivals. They both got to choose um, a lineup. So for the opening acts, they went for the Kairos and the Chase. So the Kairos were picked in the last episode. Super Seconds, they picked Girl Band and the Lilacs. Midway Madness, they had Red Run Club and the Claws. Pre-headliners, they had the Snuts and the Ks. And for their headliners, one of Liverpool's best bands in my eyes, the Heavy North uh, headlining for Vicky. And for Sean, he picked Apollo Junction. And for their encore, Vicky chose Broken Stones for her lineup to perform, while Sean chose Forever. So very simple, five acts, five time slots. But before we can talk about your acts, Amy, you've got to give your fancy festival name and we've got to give it a venue. So Amy, what are you going to call your fantasy festival. I thought about it and I thought Sunshine Festival because of the song She Sunshines, one of my favourite cast songs. Uh, yeah, and obviously your Twitter profile is a, a cast reference, which isn't yes. a very obvious cast reference, right? Because mm. it's just a standard album track on the album you, you've already spoken about. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Amazing. It's, I love it. Yeah, I love that album. I love the whole album. <laughs> Amy, I'm so old. I remember going and walking to WH Smith to buy that album in the Ilford Exchange Yay. whenever it came out when I was in sixth form, uh, which is ridiculous, really. All right, so <laughs> we've got the Sunshine Festival. Amy, you can hold it anywhere in the world. You can hold it locally. You can hold it as far away as what you can get to. Big, small, the choice is yours, Amy. So where are you going to hold the Sunshine Festival? I think in front of the Lava Building, next to the Mersey. In, in July, well, I was going to say it's going to be sunny in July. It hasn't been this year, has it? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. In front, yeah, in front of the in front of the lava building. I think that'd be perfect. Perfect fantasy festival. We can have fantasy weather as well, so it'd be a lovely day. Yeah. The sun will be shining. No rain. Just a lovely warm day in Liverpool. And all right, I know how difficult it is. I know how varied your music taste is. So I imagine getting this down to five acts must have been very tough. Before we talk about your five. Are there any acts you want to mm-hmm. mention who you love, but just are missing out on your fantasy festival? I wrote a list for you. I've got like... <laughs> I love it. I've got a, a massive list. Okay, I've got Sam Cooke, uh, The Clash, uh, The Lars, Van Morrison, Captain Beefheart, uh, Rolling Stones, Fleetwood Mac and The Who. Oh, and The Smiths. I, I didn't write that down, but The Smiths as well. All right, so some big, big yeah. acts are missing out. Let's crack on with the five then. All right, so two o'clock, Sunshine Festival, lovely day in front of the live building, great crowd, everyone's really nice, there's no idiots here, everyone's having a great time, <laughs> and it's time for your opening act to take the stage, Amy. So who's going to open the Sunshine Festival? Well, as I said, I've got like I've got two favourite bands and one of them's Cast, so I thought Cast can open it, and yeah, because they're the best live bands I've ever seen, to be honest, so yeah, they'd open it for me. Well, all right, cast. Believe it or not, this is the first time cast have been uh, picked in a fantasy festival lineup. So, loving your work. Obviously, I love cast as well, as you yeah. will know from the John Power episode. All right, you said you love cast, but again, why do you love cast so much? And obviously, again, there's a wealth of material to pick. So what again? What would you have cast cast play in the, in their spot? I'd have John sing on some last songs because that. I mean, it's it's my dream to get like if they got back together, if if Lee and John and if they got back together, that I just it's the it's the dream for me that one. So yeah, I, I'd have them playing like Tam's Melody or uh, Looking Glass as well. So there's another favourite. Amazing. All right, so cast are your opening act. They're going to play from two <laughs> till three o'clock. First thing they've been chosen. Great choice. They're going to go down so well, and they're going to lead the way. So after that, we'll take a half hour break. Then that'll take us to half past three. It'll be time for your super seconds act, Amy. So who are you going to have on to follow cast? David Bowie. David Bowie. All right. So why yeah. David Bowie for you? I mean, he's been picked quite a few times. Normally, he's a bit higher up um, mm. in the lineup. So to get him as your super seconds is a coup, I would say, Amy. 
he normally doesn't do mm. super seconds. He's only looking at pre-headline <laughs> at the minimum. So you've got him in your super second. So why David Bowie for you? And again, obviously there's a wealth of material you can have from Bowie from early 70s right through to a few years back. And I guess kind of what era would, would you have him focus on if you could? Well, Ziggy Stardust is my favourite Bowie album. So if, I, if you could play anything off that, that'd be that'd be amazing. I also love it. Uh, Driving Saturday is my favourite Bowie song. So if you could play that, I'd be happy. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. And he's going to be your super second act. I think looking at my uh, schedule, I don't think he's ever been a super second. He's been an opening act once. Um, and other than that, he's found himself headlining or pre headline So very lucky to have David Bury as your super second. He's going to play from half past three to half past four. We'll take another half hour break and that'll take us to five o'clock. So you've had two fantastic acts to start your fantasy festival. But who's going to be your midway madness act? So I thought I'd like chill things out a bit and have Joni Mitchell. Just oh. Joni Mitchell and an acoustic guitar. That's what I'd, I'd have. Mm. Lovely shout. And I guess, why Joni for you? Because she's a bit of a change from Cast and David Bowie. I know you said you fancy a chill time. So why Joni Mitchell for you, Amy? And I guess, what does what does Joni Mitchell mean to you? Oh, she's she's my favourite female artist. I just, I love her. Blue, it's me. It's my favorite, one of my top five albums of all time, I'd say. I first heard her on, do you know the film Almost Famous? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I heard River on that when I first saw the film and I just fell in love with her. I just think she's she's everything to me, Joni. Joni Mitchell, yeah, I love her. Brilliant. Great choice. Only the second time Joni Mitchell ah. has been picked. So she is joining us for the Sunshine Festival. She's playing for you from five till six and it's going to be amazing. We'll take another half hour break and that'll take us to half past six. So three acts down, two to go. So Amy, who's going to be your pre-headline act and they're going to get 90 minutes to play for you. Who are you going to have? I've got Howlin' Wolf as me. Yeah, Howlin' Wolf. Mm-hmm. So a bit of blues. Why Howlin' Wolf? Howlin I've seen blues. from your Twitter profile, you like a bit of blues. So I guess not much surprise yeah. there. But I guess why does Howlin' Wolf make your lineup? I just love his voice. Everything. He's, even I was listening to um, an interview of him and like, even his speaking voice is just it's magic. I, just, I could listen to him all day. I think he, his voice is gorgeous. Howlin' Wolf has only ever been picked once before on the Fantastical mm-hmm. podcast, and he's been picked by no one other than John Power, the only other person ah. to pick him on this <laughs> podcast. John Power had him as his super second act. So second time Howlin' Wolf joins us, so he's in the steam company there. He's going to give us an hour and a half and play from half past six to eight o'clock. And then after that, we'll take one more half hour break, and that takes us through to half past eight, and it'll be time for your headline act, Amy. So we've got... A wealth of talent that's played for us. I feel like I know who your headliners might be, but I obviously won't kind of jump in and reveal who I think it might be. But Amy, who is going to headline your Sunshine Festival? Well, like I said before, I've got two favourite bands. One of them's Cast and the other one's The Beatles. So obviously I want to cast me one favourite band to open and then The Beatles to close it. Amazing stuff. So The Beatles are going to be your headliners. I guess we've already spoken about The Beatles, but I guess... In terms of individual tracks, in any less obvious ones that you would have them play, I guess why you've got them on your stage to play for you for two and a half hours. Uh, my favourite, I'm trying to think of my favourite song, actually it's impossible, isn't it? It's my <laughs> favourite Beatles song. I've, uh, you've Got to Hide Your Love Away has always been up there for me, off hell. I suppose that's quite a, you don't really hear that much about that one. Um, I also like, I like Savoy Truffle from the White Album, George song as well, and uh, Mother Nature's Son. But yeah, all song, yeah. Great shout. All right, so the Beatles are going to be your headliners. They're going to play for two and a half hours in front of the Liver building. It's the 13th time the Beatles have been picked. And then at 11 o'clock, they're going to bring back on stage Howlin' Wolf, Joni Mitchell, David Bowie and cast. And they all get to play one song. It can be any song that you like, Amy. So they're all looking at you and saying, Amy, what do you want us to play? So you have the power over these people. So Amy, what are you going to have them play to close your fantasy festival? I was going to say Timeless Melody, but that, that would mean that um, it'd be on twice, wouldn't it? Um, do you know what song that I do like? Ichiku Park, uh, The Small Faces. I think that'd be a good one. For the summer as well, if you didn't, you know, we're in the sunshine and listening to, you know, we're on the Mersey sunshine and I think that'd be perfect. That's a great way to end a fantasy mm-hmm. festival. So that is it for your lineup. Let's lock it in, in until this point. You can change your mind, but I don't think you will. So we've got the Sunshine Festival taking place in front of the Liver Building in your opening act. We've got Cast, Super Seconds, we've got David Bowie, Midway Manners, we've got Joni Mitchell, pre-headline act, we've got Howlin' Wolf, and your headline act will be the Beatles. 
and for your encore, they're all going to play Itchy Koo Park. Amy sounds like an amazing lineup to me. Are you happy to let that one in to the Fantastical yeah, Waltz? Yeah, very happy. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Amazing. Fantastic lineup. So I guess before we finish this, we've obviously spoken about the pod and your photography. I guess what does the future hold for you? What are you looking to do over the kind of the remainder of 2024 and, in, and into 25? So obviously you've got quite high hopes for the podcast and hopefully for the photography as well, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully anyway. Again, I'm, I'm looking to get into the photography a bit more professionally um as i said i've only been i've only ever done it you know from the crowd but to, to you know get start getting photo passes for gigs and stuff would be a dream uh, as for the podcast as well like i said we've got some amazing guests coming up so to get any you know any, any of these other dream guests that we were talking about before as well would be amazing yeah all right, so watch this space. Right, so let's plug the podcast on socials again and let's plug your socials again. So if anyone doesn't follow the pod or follow yourself, Amy, where's the best place for them to go and find you? Uh, well, as I said, my, my personal Twitter and Instagram are both at She Sunshines. Uh, and the podcast, um, so I'll have my phone here now, Amazing Melody Pod on Twitter and Amazing Melody on Instagram. All right, fantastic. So that's it. Thank you to everyone for listening to the 171st episode of the Fantastical Podcast. If you've enjoyed this one, please subscribe. You can give the Fantastical Podcast a review on iTunes. And if you listen on Spotify, please go and rate the show. Uh, You can also comment on the episode now. And also, don't forget to follow the podcast on there. That's very important. We are also on Twitter, as is Amy. So if you don't follow the pod, make sure you do do so. You can find us at Fantastival P. And if you're not on Twitter, you can email the pod if you like it, fantasticalpodcast@outlook.com. Unfortunately, we don't play music on the pod, but I'll get some tracks uh, from Amy of her chosen uh, fantasy festival lineup, and we'll get a nice little playlist to bring that fantasy festival to life. So Amy. A massive thank you. Back with a bang for episode 171. So how have you found going from host of the podcast to guest? Sometimes I find it more difficult to actually be the guest than the host. How have you found it? It's been really fun. Really, like I was a bit nervous doing it because I said I've never done anything like this before, but I've had a really nice time. So thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. I think you've been a great guest and I wish you the best of luck, you and Tom with the Mersey Melody Podcast. Looking forward to seeing where that takes you. So I'll be back next week with episode number 172. So please make sure to join me for that one. But until then, stay safe, my fantastical friends. Please continue to spread the word. And that word is fantastical. Thanks for listening.